good, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of The Producer's Life. I'm your man, Big Boy Tracks. So today I want to cook up a Timberland 90 sounding track. Now, I've done Timberland track before on this channel, and most of the time it was more of the fast-paced kind of Timberland sound, but this time I kind of want to explore some of Timberland's slow jam style. I honestly forgot Timberland really did those slow jam records. If you go and check out Genuine's first album, The Bachelor, like Timberland had a few tracks on there where he took it to that slow jam type of sound. That's the goal for this video. So hopefully this comes out dope, so I want you guys to sit back and relax. I know everybody enjoys this beat making video. Let's go. So I got some Timberland drums loaded up, and we're gonna kind of try to have that same drum groove, that's very slow pace, kind of like methodical, you know, R&B slow jam drum groove. We got the BPM set at 116. Let's go and get this thing started. So we got a basic drum pattern laid out. I still may go in later and you know add in maybe like some little drum fill sections. Cause as you can tell, they're just very simple. Boom, cat, boom, cat. Very simple as I said, but I just needed something for the start of this foundation. So now it's time to head over to the screen. And as you see, I got the SRX keyboards put up. And the preset I chose is called the first digital, basically a digital electric piano. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and lay down very simple chord progression. And uh, yeah, let's keep this thing going guys. Let me turn that quantize on real fast. I can already hear like a little melody in my head, like a vocal melody. Let's shorten it up right when the snare hits. Right there and just. Yeah. That's fire. So let's go and throw a bass in here. And for the bass, of course, I gotta use some digital sonic. So I got a nice sub synthesized bass put up right here in Analog Lab 5. And this is one of my go-to basses. I got it actually saved under my likes and it's called Basologis. Man, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's a nice sounding bass. So we're gonna simply follow along with that pattern. And I'm gonna do the same thing I just did uh, where I kind of stopped, where I cut short right when that snare hits. So let's go and lay this down, guys. That's one of them angry sounding uh, synthesized basses. You kind of hear, the longer you hold that note, the more aggressive the tone gets. Like a swelling bass, man. I always love those. So next I want to accentuate that piano, which I laid down at the very beginning, with this nice sounding one I found in the SRX dance tracks. This is called the Vintage Pad. I feel like it's gonna definitely bring this track to life. Now this pad has like, almost like this kind of cool, you know, euphoric, watery type of vibe. It's kind of hard to explain, but I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lay it down for you guys so you can hear it in action. So let's go and do this. I mean, listen. 
listen to that pad. It's like a very, like, it's like beautiful, man. And as you can tell, it's another swelling uh, type of sound, which I, I, like I said, I love those sounds. So next I wanna kinda add in like a natural sounding bell. So I got Kisuke put up right here, and as you can see, it's still kinda loading. I've always had a hard time pronouncing this. I wanna say Dolce Tone, Dolce Tone, whatever how you pronounce it, that's what I got loaded up. And this preset is called the Clear Bell. I just love how naturally it sounds. I mean, that sounds amazing to me. So anyway, we're about to go ahead and add this to the track and wake this track up even more so. Heavenly sounding. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I didn't know where to take it at towards the end, so I just kind of went back down with it. I was gonna take it up at higher octaves, but I just kind of did it that way, but this doesn't sound bad at all, man. All right, so when that hook comes in, I definitely want you guys to be able to hear the difference. Like, I want you guys to be able to separate the verse from the hook. Because the track is very simple, as you can tell. Like, I'm not doing nothing crazy. The chords are very simple. Everything just kind of repeating, but it sounds amazing. So, so when it comes to doing like a hook on this track, I definitely got to make sure that you can tell the difference between that hook and that verse. I don't want everything just sounding like one big old track. When that transition happens, you can be like, okay, yeah, here we go. This is the verse right here. If you look right here on the screen, I got the Roland Super JV1080 put up. And I decided to go with the MK80 EP, my favorite FM Sonic electric piano. We're going to play the same chords you did, but this time I'm going to play them all the way through. I'm not going to stop as I did before with everything else once the snare hits and then continue. I'm going to just kind of play it all the way through. up right there. I'm thinking about switching this out uh, for another MK EP. Like when it's all together, like it's still kind of hard to tell. So Timberland is known for really adding in the weirdest type of sound effects in his tracks. Aaliyah's record, One in a Million, it had like cricket sound in the background. Like he literally took the sound of crickets at nighttime and just chopped it up and it was hit with the drum pattern, which I thought was pretty dope. And on his genuine record, he actually took the sound of wind. Yes, wind and he had it going with the drum pattern. So we about to do the same thing. I got the wind sound effect up in here and I got it in my sampler right here and I'm gonna just play along with it. Muted the other track so you guys can actually hear this uh, with some drums and I think I got the bass up. So I'm gonna just kind of play around with it uh, throughout the track. Just so it's real subtle to where you guys can still actually hear it in the track. All right, guys, so you know what time it is. It's time to get this track arranged. We'll get all the drums tracked out. But anyway, let's hop back into this so you guys can check out what this finished product is going to sound like. Let's go.
All right, guys, so that wraps up this beat making video. I do hope you guys enjoyed that. Overall, the beat came out fire. It's definitely a switch up from the Timberland beats that I usually do. I kind of wanted to explore the other Timberland sounds that he kind of touched on and that he did also in the late 90s. And overall, I think I accomplished that. But you guys let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this beat making video, go ahead and give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and do all that good stuff. And please make sure you come back because I will be coming back once again this week with another beat making video. I want to thank everybody for watching and kicking in with your man, Big Boy Tracks, right here at the producer's life. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace.